a massive land subdivision and human activities within the Amboseli wildlife circuit pose a big threat to Amboseli National Park in Kajado County. Now, conservationists in the Amboseli ecosystem are sounding the alarm about the loss of vital conservation corridors in the Amboseli National Park and other private sanctuaries to human encroachment. And as the animals are trapped in little ecological islands, cases of human-wildlife conflict are on the up. If you take a quick snapshot of the Amsel ecosystem now, you'd think everything's good. Elephant numbers are up, giraffe numbers are up, lion numbers are up. Over the last 15 years, everything's grown. And at first glance, you think everything's fine and dandy. But truth is, it all comes down to land. Um, and in the end of the day, unless we find ways to, to increase the, the, the value of wildlife directly to a landowner, and we're just going to fight a, a rearguard action and slowly, slowly not lose wildlife to poaching, but just lose them to, to natural causes because they don't have the space. Dr. Kakweli, Wali Aribu Shambayangu, 2016, Iki Ansa Maisha Ya Kilimi. Nimelima Ikawa Mpaka Nikafikiria Kwa Ni Mimi Fimi Nikuwa Na Limia Wanyama. Wanyama Wanyakula Shambayangu, Kila Mwaka. Located in Kenya is a unique vast area of approximately 5,700 kilometers squared, the Amboseli ecosystem. It stretches between the volcanic range of the Chuluth and the Fauna Ridge Savo West National Park, all the way back to the Kenya Tanzania savanna borderlands. This semi arid ecosystem is a delicate balance of ecological corridors and dispersal areas with group ranches, conservation areas, and at its epicenter, the famous Amboseli National Park. With a diverse mix of habitats and dominated by the backdrop of Mount Kilimanjaro, Amboseli is one of Africa's most iconic landscapes. This habitat is home to hundreds of different bird species, amongst them the elegant crown cranes and huge flocks of flamingos, which feed on the algae-rich lakes of Amboseli National Park. The park is home to more than 50 mammal species, including lions, cheetahs, wildebeest, herds of zebra, and other herbivores roaming the vast plains of this unique place. This land is predominantly home to the world-renowned Maasai and a safe haven for the largest land mammal, the African elephant. The special combination of ecology and culture, Amboseli is recognized as a UNESCO Man and Biosphere Reserve. In this land of giants and people, two families struggle to coexist. In the late 70s, Amboseli was hit by a severe drought and the demand for ivory decimated the population of elephants to only 480 individuals.
the Maasai's cultural heritage and pastoral practices have sustained Amboseli's grasslands and coexisted with wildlife for hundreds of years. Their refusal to cooperate with the poachers saved the remaining gentle giants. One of the lucky survivors is a female elephant called three holes. She was a teenager when she lost her entire family through a combination of the slaughter and the droughts. Without a family, she lacked the social and ecological knowledge, which is crucial for any elephant to thrive. But luck was on her side. Three Holes met another female called Iris, who had lost her family to poachers. They both found support in each other's company and formed a strong bond. Over the next two decades, Iris and her both became mothers to several cows and a strong family unit was formed. Without the knowledge of an experienced matriarch on how to rear cows, three holes had challenges bringing up her cows and lost a few. In 2008, history repeats itself. The human greed for ivory was on the rise again. And a year later, a severe drought hit the area and hundreds of elephants died. During this time, Three Holes lost her best friend Iris, a friend who is like her sister, a bond as thick as blood. Iris' remains were never found. Three Holes now became the leader of her 14 strong family. Naitwa Isaya Kordoni. Nimesaliwa 1986. Nimesaliwa sehemu ya Imbirikani. E, naweza kukuelezea maisha yangu ya utoto nilikuwa mtu ambaye nachunga ngombe. Usi ngombe naenda machungani hiyo nilikuwa kasi yangu nikiwa utotoni. Nimeenda shule siku malisia juu ya, ya pesa fa baba alikuwa ngombe imeisha ikabidi tu ni nitoke juu haikuwa na pesa ya kumalisia shule wase wako na umuhimu kabisa kwa watoto maana tukiwa watoto tuna tunaambiwa tusifanye kasi ya uhalifu ama kuwa mtu muhisi 
Yaani alikuwa anatufundisha kabisa tufanye tu yale ambayo inatakikana tufanye. Ningependa maisha ambayo watoto wangu wasije kuteseka vile mimi nimeteseka maisha. Maana nilikuwa na natafuta na ngangana ili niweke watoto wangu maisha mazuri wasije kuteseka kama maisha yangu mimi nilivyoteseka. Those of us lucky enough to live and work in Amasali know it to be an incredibly special place. And I'm not sure that it's more special than other places in Africa, but it is iconic. And most people will have, not knowingly, but have seen Amboseli on film. You know, you've got Kilimanjaro standing above these beautiful plains and these rich swamps where wildlife comes. It is also sort of iconic to see these big herds of elephants striding across these dusty plains. I mean, it's a really beautiful part of the world. But one of the things that makes Amboseli really interesting and a very important place is that it's a coexistence landscape. So the protected areas, the areas where local communities are limited access, are very, very small. And that means that most of the wildlife in Amboseli is, work, is living and moving through community lands and coexisting with people. And so that strong history of coexistence is something that has let us see Amboseli as it is today with thriving elephant, giraffe and lion populations. Ni kama wameongeseka na tena nimeona mabadiliko fulani sababu kwa samani tukiwa watoto walikuwa wanaogopa watu. Lakini saa hii ni kama ndofu na wanadamu ni kama wamesoea hata ndofu anaweza kuja karibu na mpaka boma ndani hawaogopi hawaogopi watu. Na tena wamekuwa wengi. atukuwa na shida nao juu hakuna ndovu wakikaribia mali wakiona tu harufu ya mwanadamu anatoroka mbio hata hawezi kukaribia pale kwa hivyo ilikuwa tofauti kabisa wakati tulikuwa na watoto na saa hii saa hii ndio maisha imebadilika wanyama wanasoyana na mwanadamu kabisa hawaogopi kabisa throughout Kenya the population is, is exploding and, and land is fast becoming a major issue. Um, it's just not available in, in as, in, in as uh, much quantity as it used to be. What's happening here is, is we have these huge communal areas um, where you have multiple thousands of people who own it, but a lot of that land is, while it's not particularly good farming land, it is, it's available and it's, and it's more land available than, than the other um, heavily farmed areas in Kenya. So what you have is, is a lot of people who are living in marginal areas, moving into Maasai land where there's a lot of space available and setting up farms and, and other developments all over the place. So the biggest threats to Amboseli are the same things that threaten ecosystems across the planet. It's the human need for space, for land, for places to grow food, for people to have livelihoods. As uh, people become more sedentary, instead of following their livestock, they've been encouraged to stay in one place. That's easier for governance and it gives them better access think, to things like education and healthcare and voting. So there has been both an increase in the overall population and then also people staying put rather than moving around with their livestock stock in the same way that elephants move you know to access new pasture and stuff so that's probably been the biggest change in the last 10 years so as the number of people in in Amboseli has grown it's not just because people are having more kids or that kids are living longer or people are living longer life it's also because people are moving to Amboseli in order to farm or to take advantage of other economic opportunities that are around those growing populations and what that just means is that the interface between humans and elephants is getting more pressed. So you have more people on one side, and then you also have more people who are inexperienced living alongside elephants as well. And you have more activities that are maybe incompatible with elephant movements as well. So all in all, that's just pressing this ecosystem tighter and tighter, and meaning that more and more people are having negative experiences with elephants. 
Freehold's Day starts in the dense forest and bushy areas on the western side of the Ambuseli National Park. She and her family spent the night outside the park in the community-owned areas where they feed on vegetation which can't grow in the saline swamps of the park, giving them the much-needed balanced diet. The elephants learned to avoid humans during the day as competition for water and grazing alongside livestock is too dangerous for both. This is one of the reasons why they spend most of the time during the day inside the national park. At the first rays of sunshine on the mountain peak, Three Holes and her family start a more than 10 kilometer long journey from the woodlands to the lush and green swamps. At the end of the day, they will have covered a vast distance of more than 25 kilometers. Three Holes family are not the only ones who take this route every day. Other families will also travel alongside her, sometimes building large herds of more than 250 elephants. On their way to the swamps, the elephants feed on different plants, enjoy the earth for a quick dust bath, and use the time to socialize with other families. Three holes learned at an early stage the value of safe havens like Amboseli National Park. So she and family never wander far off the park boundaries. With every step closer to the swamps, their excitement increases. Niliona maisha ya kulima inainua watu tukilima nyanya unakuja unapata unapata pesa mzuri ambaye inakusaidia kujasa ngombe kwa boma na kujengea watoto wako nyumba mzuri ya kuishi na kuendeleza maisha yako ya baadaye. Yani tu, kwa hii maisha ambaye tumelelewa sisi hii eri ambaye ni eri ambaye watu wanangangana kulima. Kwa hii nimejionea tu na macho nami nikasema wate ni, ni, ni yani nimejifunsa tu nikiona wensetu wa kilimo. Ana kilimo wakati ilianza hii eneo ya kwetu, ilianza ikitumika na watu wanao kuja inche, wanakuja kulima, sisi tunasimamia tu mtu wa shamba alime, ikawa sisi wakati wa tunasimamia wale watu tukafundi tukajua pia sisi maisha ya kilimo ikawa maisha imebadilika hakuna masai hakuna nini kila kabila sasa wote wanalima maana tumeona kilimo ni maisha masuri inaweka maisha ya mtu nzuri you have all sorts of different people you have multinational agricultural companies um, setting up big commercial farms um, but by far the bulk of it is is individuals from neighboring areas who have their family has already farmed their entire farm and, and a younger son needs to find somewhere else and that's a lot of them are coming towards uh, especially Kimana area and Isinet area where, where there's a decent water table and, and fertile soil water is the issue so wherever there's water farms are popping up. Amboseli Savo ecosystem basically gets its water from Kilimanjaro and the Chulu Hills. Two hugely important water towers, um, obviously one in Tanzania, but supplies a whole lot of water to, um, to Kenya. The northern side, northeastern side of Kilimanjaro and all of the Chulu Hills are porous landscape. So while it's collecting all the water, very little of it is found right there. It all goes right down and pops up hundreds of k's away. So the water within the actual ecosystem of Amboseli, um, Amboseli is really the only permanent water source with the exception of the river that goes through 
where we are now, Kimana Sanctuary. Um, and Amboseli is all under underground act fires off Kilimanjaro. Water being one of the limiting factors for human activity in the ecosystem means making water available quite often be detrimental to rangeland health, wildlife populations. The need for food production is, is so high that you're invariably losing natural marshland to farmland wherever there is water available for free. Um, people, are, people are using it to farm. So the majority of the swamps outside of Amboseli are converted into farmland. Um, where we are now, Kimana Sanctuary, there's a big swamp on, on one side where there's a big issue at the moment between different communities. Um, and that is almost entirely, entirely farmed. Um, and that river should be feeding into the Sava River all the way down to Kalana and down to the coast. But it hasn't it's flowed this year for a good eight months of the year. It's the first time in a long time. It stopped flowing now and it won't flow until it rains again. Um, and that obviously is a huge issue downstream. Where you get now all the livestock and all the wildlife are now coming further and further up to get the water, which makes it harder on the ground, harder on the, the habitat, but also where the water is, there's farmers, so the conflict goes back up again. Three holes and her family have reached their favorite spot in the park. Here, they find water all year round and lots of fresh green sprouts, which they feed on for most of the day. The swamps are not only a good feeding ground, they provide a safe place to socialize, play, and form friendships. Playing is not only important to form stronger bonds between the family members. It is also used to improve motor skills and gain strength. Young males play fight to prepare themselves for the years to come, as only the strongest male will get the opportunity to mate. It's not all serious though. Three Holes youngsters play for another reason too. Simply to have fun. Playing can be tiring. Since Three Holes and her family feel safe within the park's protection, she is confident enough to gather them for a much needed nap. To protect the young family members from the hot sun, Three Holes and the other older females stand close together, giving enough shade for the sleeping youngsters. As a matriarch, Three Holes plays an important role in the family. She leads the group to fresh feeding grounds and fresh water, and she is the center pillar of the family. During difficult times like a drought, or despite the encroaching human population, Three Holes managed to lead her family successfully. Despite all the challenges, Three Holes has a little secret. She has just delivered a male calf. Now, many years after her feet first found the ground, her cow finds his. As a mother, she will protect him and for the next decade, she will pass on the knowledge he needs to thrive on his own. The two-day-old calf is already trying to mimic three holes' behavior. To control the more than 40,000 muscles in his trunk, he will need a lot of practice. All the practicing takes physical effort, though, 
and that can only be fueled by mother's milk. Drinking is also not so easy when you are a little baby elephant and figuring out the right mom can often prove challenging. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of guidance. The little one is gaining strength day by day and is eager to explore the new world. The cattle egrets seem to have his attention. and chasing them is one of his favorite activities. All this running around proves to be tiring. He is getting tired. Time for a nap. Three holes will watch over him while he is resting in her shadow. Traditionally, farming in Ambaseli was confined to the slopes of the mountain where there was enough rainfall for that to be a viable option. And elephants were, would go up there, but, but it's not a very high density elephant habitat. So that was the situation maybe 30 years ago. Over time, people have increased the amount of farming that they've done in around swamps and then dug boreholes and done irrigated farming. So the amount of farming in the ecosystem has spread and it's not been done in sort of a concentrated block. It will be one farm here, one farm there. Um, so it's in wildlife habitat. So eland and zebras and elephants are all moving through this area and stumbling across these incredibly rich food patches which obviously has massive impacts on farmer livelihood. If you're a farmer and you want to farm tomatoes or farm peppers to send your kids to school you know you don't always have a choice about where you do that um, but then equally then the elephants don't really have a choice about where about moving through areas where they don't have rich crops Sasa mke wangu wakati niliingia nilimkisha kujiunga na kasi ya kilimo alifurahia sana akijua ya kwamba pia sisi baadaye tutapata pesa mingi ya kuendeleza maisha yetu Pesa na kuambia rafiki yangu unaweza kuinuka mpaka watu waseme kama umeenda kufunja mabengi ya watu kuiba pesa ni pesa mingi Kijasa lori moja una, unaweza kuja na milioni moja oni wa siku moja kufuna nyanya. Kujasa gari hile ni lori kubwa ya nyanya. Unaweza shika milioni. Na muka saa kumi na moja ni toke ndo saa kumi na mbili kamili ya subuhi ni kue shambani. Ni yanse kushika jende kabula juu haijakuwa kali. Na lima hadi saa sa sita, yende ni kule lunch, ni ngoje juu ni toi kilogo saa nanya kamili, ni rudi tena kwa shamba, ni lime hadi six jioni, saa kumina mbili jioni, alafu mifunge kasi ya, ya jende. Lima ni nyesi mitatu. Kingangana, hakuna malipo, yani mjui kama utakuja kupata ama utapata. Mjesi mitatu, hakuna chichote nye utapata hiyo katikati ya hiyo mjesi mitatu uko kasi tu. Kila subui ni kasi, kila subui ni kasi hadi hiyo mjesi mitatu niishi. Uje upate, uwe ujapata mjesi mitatu kasi tu nisu ya siku saba kwa wiki. Ugali 90 days, ugali 90 days hadi ile chakula enye unaotesha una hivi.
Right now, we are preparing ourselves because we are waiting for the people to give us a report of the elephants when they end up to the shambas. This is the other flash we have been given by our OC. I'm taking them to the, my, my colleagues so that we are going to be ready. We get some people give us a report of the chambers and Kii and Marura and, and, and the sample. When we get this, this report from the people, then we are going to help them. Each, maybe one day we are just resting, one day only, maybe other days, all the other days, we are just going every day to go and try to help people because of this, this land of the elephants. Sasa 2019, wakati Yanyangu imekuwa tayari kwenda sokoni. Asu hiyo hiyo siku ya siku ya hiyo hiyo chumbe. Ulikuja na wanyama wanne ambaye na babu ndofu ambaye alikuwa ameitoa timu. Sulikimbizana na wawo kitu sa nile ya usiku Ikefike ya saa sita Usingisi ika nile mea Kalala kwa hile geto kidogo ya shamba Ulala nika maji ika niyamusha Walifunde walifunja muto Uinuka hivi Yoni nyama ilikuwa na tende kukwa nyo nyo ndoa Ile ni kasi ya mesimitatu ya nifanya shambani Masa badala ni ikageoka badala ni pate Wanyama ndio wamefungua ile soko Na wakamalisa iyo iyo siku Kweli nimesikia uchungu, nimepiga nduru Juhu wanyama wamekata kutoka Wakulima wengi uote wakajitokesa hapu Wakanisaidia lakini tayari shamba imesha isha
The swamps that are currently being farmed were elephant and other wildlife habitats. And what we saw was that when those swamps started to be used more heavily for farmland, the families that were based there, the elephant families, moved in to, our, to the park. And Males are more tolerant of being around uh, other kind of land uses, so the Kimana Sanctuary remains a really important area for males particularly, but unfortunately they're also more likely to crop raid. So they are basically sat right next to a snack menu with some really appealing items on it, which is a massive challenge for Big Life and our other partners to help manage. The reason that elephants eat crops is not to decimate farmers' livelihoods or to uh, be destructive. It's because they're building massive bodies out of plant material, which are generally quite low calorie. And so they are evolutionarily kind of pressured and focused to select the best resources that are available to them. And unfortunately, the crops that we plant and the foods that we grow for human consumption are extra palatable and very calorie rich, especially compared to wild foods. Male elephants grow until they're 45, 50 years old. They grow throughout their lives and that growth is crucial for them to be able to compete with other males and to have reproductive access. So male elephants don't really get a chance to breed until they're at least 35 years old. And the bigger they are, the sooner they'll be able to start competing with other males for access to these rare and precious oestrus females. Because if each female only comes into oestrus about every four years, so when you look at it from that perspective, you can understand that it's really not surprising that elephants, and especially males, are really, really wired, really programmed to choose the best resources that are available to them. And if there are human foods in the ecosystem, that's really what they're going to go for. ndofu kwa kweli waliharibu shamba yangu tangu 2016 nikianza maisha ya kilimo nimelima ikawa mpaka nikafikiria kwani mimi tu nimekuwa nalimia wanyama shamba yangu imeshikana na hiyo hiyo mpaka ya wanyama hivyo ndofu wakifuka kwa mto ndio hiyo hiyo shamba wanaanza tu kuikula mara hiyo hiyo kwa hivyo mimi nimelima wanyama tangu hiyo 2016 hadi 2020 wanyama wamekula shamba yangu kila mwaka conflict happens at some level every single day when it comes specific to crop raiding by elephants um, it varies hugely between the seasons obviously they're, they're waiting for the right time to, to hit the crops because they want them to be ripe and obviously when it's drier the farms being in the water areas and also generally being green compared to the natural vegetation, you see the incidents go right up. At the moment, we get around about 500 incidents a year, and that includes incidents that we prevent or we control, or incidents that we just end up responding to the next day to calculate. In, I believe last year, we ended up with about 360 acres um, completely destroyed um, within the area. Now that is after the fence um, was built. Previous to the, the fence, we were averaging six to 700 acres completely destroyed. But at that point, we estimated that we were only getting to 50% of the crop rating. So we didn't have the real statistics, but we expected to be well over a thousand acres completely destroyed 
And you consider that that's generally going to be at least 100 to 250 individual farmers affected and completely um, destroyed their annual income. It's understandable why conflict is such a large issue. Hii sasa ni miaka mingi ambayo ninangangana kujitoa kwa hali ya umaskini. Mbona mimi ninalima kama ninalimia tu wanyama? Ni wapi mimi nitakuja kupata msahada ya hii kazi ya hii miaka yote ambayo ninalima tu wa, wanyama wanakula? Kwa kweli hiyo siku nimesikia uchungu mpaka mimi karibu hata nije nijinyonge kwa hii miti. Niseme kweli aina haja nimesema tu aina haja niwe hai. Imeniokoa tu kitu moja wakati niko pale nikijitayarisha kabisa yani nimeona kabisa sina utamu niishi dunia niwe kasi yangu ya miezi ya miaka mingi nimekuwa kama nalimia wanyama wacha niende mke wangu akaja vile nimeangalia mke na ni mdogo wakati huo bado tulikuwa na mtoto moja tu na tulikuwa na mtoto moja nikaangalia huyu mke wangu na mtoto tuko na moja wachosi ikatilika ambaye atasijui nisingitoka wapi ikakumbuka wengine sasa nikikufa kweli wataishi wataishi yake kwa si watashambuliwa pia na wao ni kwa sasa familia yangu yote imesambaratika namna hiyo big life started off mainly um, as a response to the ivory poaching crisis in 2008 to 2012 um, so that was our real focus to begin with, and, and anti-poaching, wildlife security, and intelligence were kind of our pillars to begin with. But as that kind of got sorted out through our own work and other people's work, and, and basically the attention the world gave it, um, conflict very quickly became one of our major, major issues. And in 2014, for the first time since 2008, we had we lost more elephant to conflict than we did to poach. Elephant conflict specifically is loss of habitat, and that's kind of one of the contributing causes where farms are appearing where they never used to be, um, and just less and less area for the elephants to to, to survive that. tie all that all in together and, and the truth is it's conflict over land and space um, and that's basically what I think every African conservation organization is, is going to have to focus on in the next um, 10 to 15 years. Without that we're all just uh, looking after animals that are eventually not going to have anywhere to live. <laughs> ni ngumu sana maisha ya kilimo wanyama tu ndio wanatoaga watu watu wangekuwa maisha mazuri lakini wanyama wana wanamaliza chakula we've done about 105 kilometers of electric fence for specifically crop protection fences it helps the farmers but it's also serves the wildlife in, in keeping them to their areas reducing conflict and keeping the corridors open the specific area we're talking about here the border of Kimana sanctuary we fenced the southern boundary of Kimana Sanctuary and the western boundary, um, obviously leaving the gap for the corridor itself. We've then fenced all the way to Amboseli National Park and back on the northern side of the farmland to the north of Kimana. When we tried to keep fencing that northern corner, the guys rightly made the point there's no point in you fencing the side with the less wildlife if you're not going to fence the, the side with wildlife because you're just going to get them stuck in the farms themselves. So we made the decision at that point to wait until we could fence the, the boundary of Kimana Sanctuary. And unfortunately what's happening there is is a lot of those farms, and I wouldn't be, in fact I'll be, I can almost guarantee that that farmer you talk to, he's on a farm which has been leased to him by a Birkani Group Branch member, but that bit of land actually belongs to Kimana Group Branch. So there's an argument between the two group branches over where exactly the boundary is. Obviously it's established, it's been established for a long time, but politics in Kenya doesn't mean it's going to follow that the whole time. Our 
defense project was supposed to be 145 kilometers. It's 35 kilometers waiting to be done, and the only thing that's holding it up is that, that line. Elephant range isn't static, and I feel like there's a really, there's an idea now that elephants belong in a national park. Like, like they know where we've put the border on a map to say they can be on this side and not on that side. And elephant range is not static. It's never been static. Ecologically, they move around and they move into new areas as it becomes available. Again, you're watching the elephant adapt as, as crop protection fences get put in and other areas that there weren't so many farms now have a lot more farms. The elephants have learnt and they, and they shift their, their habits to suit where they get them the maximum efficiency, essentially. So the areas where they know the crop protection fences, they no longer target quite as much. But where these other areas are getting converted and subdivided quite quickly, elephants are now beginning to target those areas a lot. And, you know, they're clever animals. They learn to break the fence. So, uh, there's three particularly, we call them fence breakers, but they, they, they've learned to break the fence and they remain there. But other bulls are adapting and going to other areas for their, for their crop raiding needs. This idea that, that has become, because we want to sort of capture a moment, it's really, that's not conservation. That's just freezing things in time. And we don't know what this should look like. What we know is that everybody should have a place in it, and that is something that is a moving set of parts that is really complicated to negotiate. Ninapenda tu juni kitu ambaye kwanza macho hakuna siku itasoe hata kweli tunaishi karibu na wao kila siku lakini wakikaribia saa hii bomba bado macho inatamani kabisa kuangalia Kwa Lamb subdivision in the whole ecosystem is ongoing and it basically changes everything fundamentally. Now with lamb subdivision, these communally owned areas are going to be broken up into completely individually owned parcels. We know who's going to own certain areas of land. Um, some parts are remaining communal, other parts are going to become completely privatized. Essentially, land subdivision done right can be a very positive thing. Um, in that the main thing is, is it, it means the members of these group branches or the former members of these group branches now have a direct link with conservation and other land uses where they can actually receive revenue themselves and an individual. Um, but to go with that is just a huge myriad of challenges. We've got 4,000 people who now all own three or four different plots of land um, and each and every one of them has to be engaged with one-on-one, um, -on -one, it makes things very difficult. The biggest threat to coexistence is that people are not realising their livelihoods in a way that, that they want to, that they aspire to, and that they feel that wildlife are encroaching on that. And the best example is having elephants and farms, uh, farmers as trying to be neighbours. Those, those neighbours, that just doesn't work. It, it really, there's no way for a farmer and an elephant to coexist peacefully. They're always going to have uh, different interests. What it means to the elephants is, is, is exactly the same thing as what it's meant in the past. It's just accelerating what the problem already is. Um, the resources they have available to them now are going to reduce. The space they have available to them now is again going to reduce. Um, it's a question of not not trying to save everything, but saving the parts that we know are critical, and saving enough parts in between so that elephants can get from it. Subdivision is an increase of incompatible developments happening in the middle of 
um, what used to be wildlife area. So that's only going to lead to one thing, and that's conflict increase on all levels. But predation conflict, human elephant conflict, water conflict, grazing conflict, all of them. Sasa ni yani ni kanza ikawa mawaso tu sinarudi kutoka 2016 hadi 2020. Kasema hapana, haina haja. Tena nijiumise miezi mingi na mna hiyo nikilima, alafu baadaye ninafuna siro. Kwa kweli sahi nikitafuta na nikipata namna ingine hiyo ndio sahi nafurahia kabisa. Paka mke wangu pia hata amekufa mawazo ya kasema tubadilishe hii maisha ya kilimo juu labda nyota yako haiko kwa maisha ya jembe. Yaani kwa kweli kwa kweli ni yani ninajaribu kutafuta namna ingine. Maana vile nililima hizo miaka yote tangu 16 hadi 2016 hadi 2020 hakuna faida mimi nimepata kuhusu kutokana na jembe. Nikasema hii miaka yote kama ni kufumilifu kweli nimefumilia. Hii tukiingia 2020, 2021. Nikasema hapana. Get more people, more farms and more elephants. Conflicts only going to increase. Um, whether you can reach a level that that coexistence happens to a degree that, that it's acceptable to both sides, I think that's possible. I think that's what we've achieved in Kimana in, in, in the last five years. But there's no doubt it's going to be a huge fundamental change in terms of the area. You look at Kimana, it's 105 acres, 105 kilometers of fencing. Subdivision goes ahead, we're realistically looking at, at well over 500 kilometers of fencing needed in the next 10 to 15 years in this area. Um, so that's a huge burden to put on conservation entities to, to try and fundraise and manage that fencing. That's really the only way I can see it ever being achieved. And even that, to be perfectly clear, there's no such thing as 100% coexistence, peaceful coexistence. Farms are going to get destroyed, and are going to get killed. Fences are going to get buggered, etc., etc. It's just no way to avoid it. You can have the best fence in the world and you're still going to get fence breaking out and it's incorporated on the other side. Over the next five years, I know 100% we're going to see um, a huge change and the level of tolerance that we have right now won't continue. It's going to get worse. Um, we have to accept that and figure out how we can manage that whilst also doing the multiple other things um, on the subdivision subject to try and get it to a level where, where we can then really kick on and, and more or less replicate that Kimana model across the ecosystem where Kimana was subdivided in the 90s, farming's been happening for, for decades um, and only in the last kind of 10 years has that become, begun to settle down a little bit in terms of this is farming area, this is conservation area produce benefits for conservation area and protect the farm um, and keep them separate to, to a degree. Um, and that we've seen work. Um, the concerning part is, is just how much resources it takes to make it work. Um, you're talking well over a million dollars spent in capex on the fence um, and running costs of in excess of half a million dollars a year fence and security and, and crop protection. And that's a 10-15% of the of the ecosystem. Securing wildlife without securing the land is, is a waste of time. Not, a, not necessarily in the short term, but in the longer term you're, you're just not going to get anywhere. Well, I believe there is hope. Um, whether we can keep that hope going over the next critical five years um, is another question. And the thing that is terrifying is, is the amount of funding that requires. Is hope a lot of work to do. So three holes and her family could lose habitat through subdivision. They may not. That opportunity is still open and this is the kind of thing that Big Life and all the other partners are looking for and fighting for. So I hope that for three holes and her family, subdivision doesn't really make any significant changes because the side of the ecosystem that she lives on at the moment doesn't have a lot of farming on it. It's unlikely to have more in the next 10 years, let's say. Um, 
And so I hope that for the rest of her life and until this new baby that she's had leaves his family, uh, they may have very little experience of what's going on in subdivision. I think it will affect her sons. So her sons who've already left the family, this new calf, when he's big enough to grow and explore, the places that he will be able to go will be different uh, from what they are now. But that doesn't mean, I don't think, that there won't be space for him to grow up and be a wild, successful elephant himself in the future. Ninafikiria kabisa. Yaani ninajua kabisa nitapata tu hata kama maisha ya kilimo ina ime ina ina rega rega yani hainicho hainitoi vizuri. Ninajua tu iko siku ambayo maisha yangu itafika mahali ninataka. Hiyo kabisa najua iko siku ambayo maisha yangu itabadilika ikuwe sio ile isaya ambayo watu walisoea hana chochote hana ngombe hana anything hajajenga nyumba ninajua iko siku ambaye maisha yangu mimi sijui Mungu atapitia wapi lakini ninajua iko siku maisha yangu itabadilika As peaceful as his life might be at this point, soon he will face the reality of the period he is born into, a period of change. Over the years, changes in global weather pattern have increased the number of droughts in many parts of the world. In the last decade, Kenya has endured three terrible droughts, and the ongoing drought is one of the most severe. Due to the drought in other regions in Kenya, pastoralists have moved their cattle into the Amboseli ecosystem, resulting in an immense pressure on the natural resources. With the failed media rains, the situation is catastrophic. As the natural food and water resources have been almost depleted, the elephants have to find alternatives to survive. Unfortunately, many of them end up crop raiding the unprotected farms outside of the Amboseli National Park. The question is if a peaceful coexistence will be possible. Only time will tell what the future holds for Amboseli's gentle giants. <laughs>